You know, I honest to God truly think that this video needs a content warning considering what I'm about to read. But um, in all honesty, I don't know what kind of content warning to put on it. It's just, it's interesting. <laughs> so anyone who's been in proximity of me within 20 seconds is aware that I am a massive Sonic the Hedgehog fan. Uh, I was a massive fan of the classic games when I was a kid. I loved all the fan creations, like the artwork and the fanfics and everything. I really dove into the fanfics. And so surely it should come as no surprise to any that I have a massive section of this shelf in my desk that's just dedicated to old Sonic content that I made as a kid. Unfortunately, I want to say like three quarters of it and maybe more was destroyed. Uh, and was thrown away. Granted, this was thrown away before I decided I wanted to take art and storytelling seriously, so I'm not really blaming anyone for all of that content being missing. Uh, but we have a couple of masterpieces here that I've wanted to share for a really long time, and I just never got around to it. So here we go. Here's the first one. So for context, I think I was about 11 or 12, maybe even 10, and I was in grade school and we were given these 48 page uh, line paper books. And the goal was to write a page every day. It didn't matter what it was that you wrote. It didn't matter uh, if it made sense, if it was a diary, if it was a story, it didn't matter what it was. You just had to write in it every day. And so naturally, uh, I started writing a Sonic the Hedgehog fan fiction. This is my first attempt at any kind of fan fiction ever. It wasn't my first attempt at a written story because that goes to a story that I've read on the channel previously. I'll put it in the I card. Uh, the name escaped me at the moment, but I think it had something to do with Sky Warriors. It was actually a really fun read, which is what made me want to do this video. A few other quick bits of context before we actually get into the story. So basically I had just gained access to the internet and so I had just discovered that there were people making their own OCs to ship with canon Sonic characters. I had only just discovered the like the quote unquote rules of the internet and I fell in love with one known as Rule 63. If you don't know what that is, it's essentially when you take a character from any popular media and uh, media? <laughs> media and you change their assigned gender at birth or their gender identity. And so Sonic the Hedgehog, for example, is a male figure. And so applying rule 63 to him would turn him into a woman. And the last bit of context before we actually get started is uh, I'll throw a picture of the original cover on the screen. But if you have a look closely, you'll see in pencil, it says distant world, but then it also says Sonic Adventures right in the same spot. This is because while I said I grew up with the Sonic games, I didn't know that the Sonic Adventure series existed. I was playing the classics like 1, 2, 3 and Knuckles. I played a bit of Spinball and 3D Blast as well. I had no experience with 3D Sonic ever at this point in my life and so I didn't know that there was a series called Sonic Adventure and one of my friends had to tell me that my fan fiction was named after a canonical video game and so that's why it's got Distant Worlds written in pen on the top and then Distant Worlds written in pencil on top of the Sonic Adventure. Uh, but with that being said, this is Distant Worlds. If you can hear the paper flicking around, it's because I'm actually holding it right now. <laughs> Howdy heck and hey my dudes. Now, real quick before we start, this video is sponsored by me and my graphic novel, Forget Me Not Aconite. Paperbacks, hardcovers, and ebooks are now available worldwide. Simply click the link in the description below to start your purchase. If you like zombies, drama, and character-driven narratives a la The Walking Dead, then there's definitely something here for you. So, I mean, you know, there's no harm in giving it a quick look, am I right? There's also a Patreon where you can support the graphic novel's continuation, or if you want something a little less renewable, you can buy me a coffee. Any bit of support to keep the series going is greatly appreciated. Alright, now back to the video. Okay, no, wait, I lied. I'm immediately reading the first page, and it's got references to Blaze and Silver, which means I have to have played a 3D Sonic game at this point, or at least known of Blaze and Silver's existence, which could be explained by my access to the internet. Um... But I, I don't know what's happening there. All I remember is that I did not know Sonic Adventure was a thing. Um, also, one last bit of context. This takes place in a timeline where Sonic X is canon. This is a, 
uh, part two to the Sonic X series, if you will. So if you're familiar with Sonic X, you might get a bit more of a kick out of this just because it contains characters and contexts from the anime. All right, let's go. Chapter one, and I made it very clear to specify that chapter one is from Sonic's perspective. It's labeled as the first Sonic chapter. All right. Everyone knows Sonic the Hedgehog, right? The speedy friend of ours has been in countless video games. Not these characters. Sonic and his friends discover a world... Oh my god, I can't read. I'm ca I can't read, I'm sorry. Sonic and friends discover a world among their own on the planet Chaos. Okay, so I clearly didn't know that Sonic's planet was called Mobius at this point, or even know about the South Islands, but whatever. Let's go. It started early one morning when Sonic got a call from Blaze and Silver to say that they were coming to stay next month. Tired of his own boredom, Sonic and Tails went for a walk around the dark side of the planet for a few hours. It wasn't long before they found a round ring made of metal. Remember when Chris tried to stop me from going home? asked Sonic. Why don't we visit him? Tails answered. And so they gathered everyone around, even Cosmo's plant, and set off. But before they got there, and... Oh my god, what is this spelling? But before they got there, Anonymous changed the location. Ready, everyone? Tails asked, but no one answered. They had already left. Oh, crap. And so he ran in, and guess what? Still on chaos. Whoa, whoa. That's, that's not a sentence. Oh, Sil, hang on. That's not a sentence. The sentence word for word is, so he ran in, and guess what? Still on planet chaos. Gender change! And then in brackets, there's female Sonic. So clearly, I didn't want to waste any time getting to my original Rule 63 versions of these characters, which is fantastic. I did end up redesigning a couple of them when I did this redraw. Uh, I'll see if I can pop a picture of the original on screen, but the male version of Cosmo, instead of flowers, had knives poking out of his head, and his shirt said, bite me. Uh, I really hated Cosmo as a kid, but, like, this design is unforgivable, and, like, what is going on with this, like, Sonic the Hedgehog in the background with like the massive um, wrench. I know it's supposed to be the male version of Amy. I did end up redesigning him as well, but like, oh, oh boy, we're in for a treat, my guys. Not just female Sonic, we're talking female Tails, female Knuckles, female Shadow, male Amy, male Cream, male Rouge, and even a male Cosmo. And then in brackets it says Tikal is not in the book yet. So I knew who Tikal was because of Sonic X, but like what? Who are you and what is your business here? The female figure said. I'm Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog. I must have landed here by mistake, Sonic replied. And you are? I'm Shakira, Shakira the Hedgehog, hero of, oh God. <laughs> so because this is a mirror world, right? And everything's basically like flipped, reversed, if you will. Uh, Shakira's planet is just the reverse of chaos, like chaos written backwards, and I believe it's pronounced Soa, S-O-A-H-C, I don't know, I'm gonna pronounce it as Soa throughout the book, but that's cringy as fuck. Anyway, I'm Shakira, Shakira the Hedgehog, hero of planet Soa. This is Rena the Fox, Kira the Echidna, Barry and Chocolate, Yama the Hedgehog, Darkness the Hedgehog, and Shredder the... <laughs> And Shredder the Cedrian, oh no. If you can hear buzzing in the background now, I'm really sorry. It's summer in Australia right now and I'm gonna melt if I don't have the air conditioner on. I'll try and get rid of it in post, but if you can hear it, I'm very sorry. Oh shit, sorry, we weren't finished introducing characters. There is also Vincent the Bat and Tomberina the Cat. <laughs> what are these names? Very interesting, Sonic spun around. It was Tails. Oh shit, that was Tails' line. Hang on, this isn't broken up properly. Very interesting. Sonic spun around. It was Tails. Also Knuckles, Shadow, Amy, Cream, Rouge, and a small pot plant. Do you know these people? Shakira asked Sonic. Good friends of mine, don't worry. Shadow was first to notice his female version. Love at first sight. Hi, I'm Darkness, the hedgehog said. Poor Shadow was speechless. I I'm... I I'm... <clears throat> I'm Shadow, he stuttered. Darkness giggles. You're cute. Want to stay at my house tonight? <laughs> I can't take it seriously. I'm sorry. You're cute. Want to stay at my house tonight? 
Sure, Shadow replied. So Darkness Chaos Control to her house. You can use Chaos Control? Sonic asked. Chaos Control? What's that? Shakira asked. Around here, we use Soa Control. And there's a cute little picture of Shadow blushing at Darkness. Not even gonna lie, Darkness' design is not the worst. I did end up touching it up a little bit, as you'll see in the redraw, but like... I just really love that Shadow was the kind to fall in love at first sight in my fanfic. That's just, I, I never would have expected that from Shadow the Hedgehog, our ultimate life form. The rest of you can sleep in my garage tonight. Follow me. That is, if you can. And she speeds off at supersonic speeds. By she, I'm guessing they mean Shakira because she was the last she that was mentioned in the book. Cunningly, Sonic sped after her. She looked so beautiful when she was running. Her hair made some sort of stream behind her. Eventually, Sonic caught up to her and caught a glimpse of her face. She was laughing. When they got to the house waiting for the others, they started to chat. You're not so bad for a runner, Shakira said. Same to you, Sonic replied, and for a moment they stared at each other. And just for a while, Sonic felt some sort of warm feeling. Unfortunately, he just shook it off and went to bed. So that's the end of the first chapter, or the first Sonic chapter at least. Um, I find it really funny that ten-year-old me decided that Shadow was the kind to fall in love at first sight, but with Sonic and Shakira there's this kind of slow burn where they find out they have common ground, they have a common interest, there's like this kind of sweet tender moment between the two of them literally 30 seconds after they meet like i don't know i don't know it's kind of sweet it's kind of cute i like it let's move on all right chapter two is labeled as the first shakira chapter which makes me think that every odd chapter is going to be in sonic's perspective and every even chapter is going to be in shakira's perspective which honestly i'm down for it's like split perspective stories are really great if done right considering i was 10 when i wrote this it's probably not done right but nevertheless Let's see what Shakira's thinking. Chapter 2, the first Shakira chapter. Shakira woke up to the sound of screaming. She ran downstairs to find Tails and Rena watching a horror movie, holding hands. At 4 in the morning! A few seconds later, Sonic came in and gave Shakira a wink and a butterfly kiss good morning. But little did they know, Amy was there, and once Sonic left for his morning run, she stomped up to Shakira and gave her a cold look. I just want you to know that Sonic's mine, and if you make googly eyes at him again... There was a small pause. Shakira gave a confused look. Sonic is my boyfriend, not yours. That only made Shakira more confused, but luckily Amy just walked away. Shakira was curious about Amy and Sonic's relationship. And yes, I use relationship very weakly. Anyway, Shakira was just about to leave when Yama... Uh, Yama is the, the male version of Amy. I don't know why I named him that, but we're going with it. Anyway, Shakira was just about to leave when Yama came in. Shakira, I just want you to remember that I'm your boyfriend. Again, Shakira was confused, but Yama just walked off. She never said that Yama was her boyfriend. She didn't even like Yama as a boyfriend. And yet, here he was, saying they were BFGF. Oh my god, you can tell I really didn't like Son Amy at the time. What the fuck? I love Son Amy. That's like one of my favorite ships. What, why, why does Son Amy hate Sylv? Well, maybe a little run will calm her down. So she ran around Red Lake Zone, the opposite of Green Hill Zone for the uneducated in the back. Um, and bumped into Sonic, causing the two to fall into the deepest, reddest lake in the zone. Is this like a blood lake? What the fuck? <laughs> Obviously, the opposite to can't is can. So, and Sonic can't swim, which means Shakira can swim. Which also means she had to save Sonic from the bad nicks. I love that. I love that 10-year-old logic. Well, Sonic can't swim, but they're opposites. So, the opposite of can't is can, which means my female Sonic can swim. This is back when people thought there were only two genders, by the way, which is why my brain was like the opposite of boy is girl, but that's neither here nor there. When they got to dry land, they were surrounded by badniks. Oh, oh no, there was no way out. But Sonic and Shakira knew just what to do. Sonic ran just fast enough to make a small tornado, and Shakira pushed all of the badniks in as they blew away. Sonic and Shakira were trying not to laugh, as it was so easy to destroy them. 
but Shakira tripped, causing them to kiss. <gasps> Whoa! Darkness and Shadow were hiding in a nearby bush and saw everything, and decided to tell everyone. But when they told it, they twisted the story a bit. <laughs> what the fuck is that supposed to mean? Show don't tell, Sylph. <laughs> Ten-year-old Sylph, this is bad writing. <laughs> anyway, after the accident, Shakira and Sonic got up and forgot everything. Well, Shakira got up and forgot everything. Sonic just sat there. Really? I thought you were the kind of girl that would want to take it slow, Sonic exclaimed. If anyone asks, nothing happened here. We were just running, Shakira replied angrily. Oh, angrily. If anyone asks, nothing happened. We were just running, Shakira replied angrily and ran off. After a few silent seconds, Sonic looked up and says, She likes me before running off himself. Wow, Sonic, how cocky can you possibly be? What the fuck? Okay, so that was the end of chapter two. Uh, I take back everything I said in my final thoughts on chapter one. This is not a slow burn between Sonic and Shakira. They're just going at it, I guess. I don't know what this whole shadow and darkness thing is about twisting the story a little bit, but I think we're about to find out considering what the next picture I drew in this book is. So why don't we just get going with it? Chapter three. The second Sonic chapter. When Sonic was about 10 meters away from Shakira's place, Yama stepped in front of him. I know about what happened. Know about what? Don't play dumb with me, Yama exclaimed. Sonic was confused. Shakira is my girlfriend, not yours. Sonic was now more confused than before, but Yama just walked off. I like the parallel. That was kind of funny. Good on you, Sylv. Sonic was just about to start running when Amy stood in front of him, all teary. Why, Sonic? Why would you cheat on me? She blurted out when she caught up to him. But before he could answer, she continued. Oh, it's no use. You'll probably just lie to me. And she ran off, crying more than she was before she'd gotten there. <laughs> okay, I must be dreaming. Girl, what the fuck? What is happening? What? So, Shadow and... S uh, darkness, I forgot her name for a sec, are just gossip girls now. They just like to gossip and they're spreading misinformation. Oh my god, Shadow and Darkness are drama YouTubers. Oh my god. Ooh, hang on, we're getting some shipping drama. <clears throat> just then, Shadow came by. Hey, if it isn't my ex, so does Sonic love you yet? N no, he, he has a girlfriend. What? Th that, that Shakira girl. Whoa, whoa, that's not what it seems, Sonic exclaimed. Okay, so Shadow and Amy are canonically exes in this universe, and this takes place exactly after the events of Sonic X, which means that Amy and Shadow dated somewhere in the Sonic X timeline, and I just did not mention that before. This is just casual. Okay. I like to have this little headcanon for, yes, a headcanon for my own fanfiction, um, where... Amy was still, like, head over heels for Sonic, but Shadow was kind of warming up to her and, like, having feelings for her, and so they decided to go for it. And Amy really likes Shadow, Amy really cares about Shadow, but she realized really quickly that Sonic was always going to be a priority for her, Sonic was always going to be the main one in her heart, and she realized that she couldn't do that to Shadow because she did love Shadow, she just didn't love him the way he wanted her to, and so they split up because Amy realized that if she had to choose between the world and Sonic, she would choose Sonic. Yes, that's an 06 reference. All right, move. It sure is, Buster. I saw you. Wait, hang on. Why is he confused that Sonic and Shakira are, like, allegedly dating and Amy is upset about that if Shadow's the one that spread the rumor? No idea. Very confused. Maybe Darkness told Amy and, like, Shadow didn't know that Amy knew yet. I'm giving myself way too much benefit of the doubt. Let's just keep going. And with the flick of a secret switch, Shakira's shed turned into a castle 72 stories high. Shadow Chaos, or should I say Sower, controlled to the top of the level, to the top of the, to the top level, with Amy and Sonic. At the top was Darkness, waiting for them. So you're Shadow's girl, Sonic said, trying to throw her off track. And you must be Shakira's man, Darkness replied, suddenly realizing Sonic's game. Take him to the- <laughs> What? 
Take him to the Shredder, Darkness said. Oh no. Hey, Shadow shouted. I give the orders around here. Take him to the Shredder. So Darkness tied Sonic and hung him just above the Shredder. Just then, Sonic noticed a red light was shining. Oh no, Sonic thought. Eggman must be controlling him. Wait, what? Oh, the picture that I've attached will explain it. Uh, Eggman must be controlling him. Darkness was wearing one too. And just when it couldn't get any worse, Amy was wearing one as well. Put up the wall so we don't make a mess. Amy put up a glass wall. A glass wall. Oh no, they're going to see everything. Sonic knew just what to do. Darkness called Shakira because after Sonic, she was next. Oh no, they're murdering each- oh! Well that was the end of chapter 3, and while I can't say the structure is the best, the character development is that good, or anything like that, um, fuck, I'm invested. <laughs> I haven't read this in a long time, I can't remember what I wrote, like, shit, what? Chapter 4, chapter 4, I need to know what's happening. Shakira was washing dishes when darkness called. Go to the top of the tower for a surprise, she said, and then hung up three seconds later. Shakira was curious, so she left the dishes for Yama, and to the top of the 72-story tower she went. Now bear in mind that Shakira runs as fast as Sonic, possibly faster, so it only took her five seconds to reach the top of the tower, When she and when she got there, darkness was waiting. Hang on, continuity error, one second. Earlier in this book, I mentioned that they were essentially opposites because they were the opposite gender. And I said that the opposite of can't is can, which meant Shakira can swim because Sonic can't. So if Sonic can run at the speed of sound and is super, super fast, then because they're opposites, shouldn't Shakira be super, super slow? Just throwing that out there, I found a continuity error in my own fucking fanfic. What am I spending my day doing? It's January 1st when I'm recording this, what am I doing? Anyway, uh, Shakira ran to the top of the tower, fast speeds, whatever, darkness is there waiting for her. Ah, Shakira, you're just in time to see Sonic. And as darkness moved to the side, what Shakira saw shocked her. So <laughs> One second, one second. Sonic laid dead upon the floor. Only his gloves and shoes were in one piece after the accident. Shakira gasped at the horrific sight of it. Hang on, I need to turn the- Shakira gasped at the horrific sight of it, for there was blood all over the floor, and from quill to toe was either scratched, bleeding, or bruised. Sonic! Sonic, stay with me! Shakira yelled, running to Sonic's aid. She tore up some old cloth and poured oil on it and tried to clean up his wounds. The sound of Shakira grieving awoke everyone's true senses, causing the red lights to burst and removed the spell in doing so. Amy was the first to notice Sonic's state and ran to aid him. Shadow and Darkness ran over after her to clean the mess. After a few minutes of trying to revive him, Shakira finally realized it was too late. She sped down the steps to the house on her bed and burst into tears. She shoved her head straight into her pillow. Just then, Shakira felt something under her pillow. It was a note from Sonic. Ooh, oh no. It read, Dear Shakira, After the incident at Red Lake Zone, you seemed kind of stressed. I'm sorry for pushing your buttons. I was kind of hoping you'd want to be my girlfriend. Open your bottom drawer for something special. Signed, Sonic. So she opened the drawer and there lay the cutest chow ever. On its leg was a small label that read to Shakira from Sonic named Sonira. Oh, that's so cute. Oh my God. He even named it after their couple name. Sonira, oh, okay, we're getting, um, we're getting explanatory. Hang on. He even named it after their couple name. Sonira is a name invented using two other names, aka Sonic and Shakira. When a couple is formed, any normal couple would use the male's last name for their family. But Sonic couples have a combination of both the male and female names. First name, which is why the couple's name is Sonira. So for any uneducated people, that's Sonira is the ship name, okay? Thank you. Thank you for coming to my TED talk.
That was also the end of chapter 4. I've turned the page to start chapter 5 and seen the picture that I drew and immediately remembered where this story was going, so I don't have any final thoughts for chapter 4, let's just jump straight into chapter 5. Sonic awoke in a strange area. It was all white and a few meters away was a large golden gate. Yes, we're doing this. I must be in Sonic Generations gameplay. What? Okay, when did I write this? Sonic Generations was a thing, but I didn't know Sonic Adventure was a thing? What is this? Hang on, what year did Generations come out? November 1st, 2011. Okay, so I was 11 when I wrote this. Thank you for the Sonic Generations reference past me. I must be in Sonic Generations gameplay. But I don't see classic Sonic anywhere, he thought aloud to himself. Suddenly, a small green figure came walking towards him. It was Manic! Oh my god, I love Manic. You guys are in for a treat. Manic is Sonic's younger brother that had died during a tournament against the lying, selfish little dweeb, Scourge. Yes, Scourge canonically killed Manic the Hedgehog in my fanfiction. The tournament was first meant to his knees, but Scourge took it too far. We're never gonna hear about that backstory ever again. That, that's the first and last time it's gonna get mentioned. Manic? Sonic said. Where am I? Sonic, my dear brother, Manic replied. <laughs> Welcome to heaven. That's not the best part. This is the best part. Heaven? Oh, yeah. I just died a few minutes ago. <laughs> I <laughs> this chapter is such a wild ride. I hope y'all are ready for this bullshit. I'm surprised you're the last of our, us three to pass. <laughs> what do you mean? Sonya died last week of food poisoning. Really? Sonic's reply was. What is your business here? A strange voice boomed and a figure emerged from the shadows. <laughs> this is where it gets great. It was me, Brittany the Rabbit. This is my first persona ever, Brittany the Rabbit. I'm going to put a picture up of her. I'm going to redraw her. This is Brittany the Rabbit, and you're going to love her in a second. Just watch. Hey, sweetie, Manic said, but I just gave him a disgusted look. I, I don't hate Manic. I love Manic. Can we get some Brittany x Manic fan art, please? Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Sonic. Remember me? I said. Sonic looked as if he was concentrating hard, but then he blurted out, Brittany, your name is Brittany. Duh, Manic said. Only the best and hottest singer out there. Ahem, someone coughed. It was Sonya. Second hottest. Who is she behind, Sonic and Manic asked. <laughs> Me, you dimwits. Your sister, Sonya. I mean, to be fair, I'd be pretty concerned if both Sonic and Manic thought that Sonya was hotter than, than, than anyone because, because they're related. But anyway. No, she's pretty much the hottest. Why, you little... <laughs> this, is the best, this is the best line in the whole fanfic. Are you ready? The fight went for hours, and they even asked Jesus, <laughs> but now it's your turn to vote. And then the picture says, seriously, you choose, and it's a picture of my Sona, Brittany the Rabbit, <laughs> and Sonya the Hedgehog. <laughs> oh, I was 11. I was, I was 11. Eventually, they went inside. Sonic couldn't believe his eyes when he saw his house. It was a massive chocolate-colored house with dark chocolate window sills and doors. It was great, but something was missing. Shakira. She was probably dancing on his grave as he's thinking. If only he had the time to tell her how he felt. Eventually, Sonic got tired and went to bed. And cried himself to sleep. Oh no. That's the end of the chapter. And for my final thoughts on this chapter, I only have two questions. One, why does Sonic think Shakira would be dancing on his grave? Is it because she got angry that they accidentally kissed at the lake? Because that's the only like time she ever lashed out at him. Uh, and two, what are people's opinions on Britney versus Sonya? Like, come on, who's the hottest? Clearly it's Britney, right? <laughs> Chapter 6, the third Shakira chapter. After crying herself to sleep, oh, they both cried themselves to sleep. What sweethearts. After crying herself to sleep, Shakira awoke feeling a little better since she had let it all out the previous night. 
At the base of the bed, Sonira was eating Shakira's secret lollies from her compartment. She left the room and Sonira to have breakfast. Instead, Yama was sitting at the table with Shakira's favorite food, chili dogs. But the chili dogs only reminded her of the chili dog contest they had. When did they have the chili dog contest? I've read every page of this book up until now. Where's the chili dog contest? You're a liar. So she ran off for some quiet time. She stopped at Red Lake Zone. But the lakes only reminded her about the time they had their first accidental kiss. So she ran back home to her backyard. But the sight of the shed only reminded her of Sonic's death. He was everywhere. Everywhere but where she wanted him by her side. The way he would never take anything seriously, especially the day they kissed. The way he would always help no matter what. And yet no one helped him when he needed it most. That made Shakira feel guilty. Especially since he was her male version. Never forget that is in brackets. Yes, we will never forget. The self cest is off the charts. So she asked Darkness for help because she had lost someone dear to her. Marco. Unfortunately, Darkness couldn't remember what she did because when she was recreated, her memories were away, uh, were erased, were erased. Even Shakira should have remembered that. She was the first to know about it. So she went to see Amy, but she was grieving a lot more than Shakira was. So Shakira decided that Rena could help. So she went to see her. How many so's are in this paragraph? Oh my god. But when she opened the door, Rena was there making some tea for Tails, and asked Shakira if she wanted some. Shakira just couldn't say no to Rena's tea. It was amazing. So Shakira sat down to see Tails tinkering with nuts and bolts and all kinds of metal. Hi Shakira, good to see you, Tails said, only looking up for a split second. Pass me the spanner, please. So Shakira passed him the spanner. What are you doing, Shakira said. I'm gonna try and bring Sonic back to life. Sonic must mean a lot to you, Shakira said. Tails, I hate to break it to you, but there's no bringing Sonic back. <laughs> Some friend you are. No, seriously, there's no bringing him back. The fight went on for hours, and eventually Shakira left, heartbroken and unloved. Oh my goodness. Oof. So that was chapter 6. Uh, aside from the straight out lying to us about the chili dog contest that they clearly never had, I honestly don't think that was the worst. Like, I like the idea of being confused and not knowing what to do with your grief and trying to turn to others for help. I also really, really like the idea that Shakira and Tails are dealing with Sonic's death differently. One is refusing to let go and doing everything in his power to try and reverse it because he's still in denial. And Shakira just kind of wants to grieve it and move on from it and kind of, yeah, it's just, I don't know. That was, obviously, because it was written by an 11-year-old, it was not perfect, but there was a solid idea there. And I really like that solid idea. I, I might steal that from younger me for a future project. Anyway, chapter 7, the fourth Sonic chapter. Sonic awoke just before dawn to find a green figure pruning his plants. It wasn't Manic, because he was in the room downstairs, sleeping in. Some things never change. So he went downstairs to have a closer look. Cosmo? He asked the figure. Sonic, you're awake. It was Cosmo. How has Tails been? <laughs> Trust me, you don't want to know. Please, Sonic. Okay, but don't say I didn't warn you. And so Sonic explained everything Tails had done since she died. By the time he had finished, Cosmo had burst into tears. Oh god, what did Tails get up to? What? But I thought Tails loved me! Well, you have been gone for six months. Long enough for him to get over you and find another girl to cover for- To cover for you! Whoa! That's not Sonic, that is not what you say! But Cream? Of all people, he picked Cream? What's wrong with Cream? Nothing. Sonic gave her one of those looks that just says, Really? Oh, okay. It's... it's just that... Again, she paused. She wanted to tell him, but her secret wouldn't leave. Sonic was just about to leave when Cosmo broke down. Sonic, wait! I hate Cream so much because before she was brought into the series, I was meant to be in it, and we would have discovered her, and she would have betrayed Tails. Oh shit, so this is, for those of you who don't know, this is a callback to the Sonic X uh, season where they discovered Cosmo 
and something something Metarex, something something Tails kills Cosmo after having a brief romance arc. Uh, this is saying that Sega, the, the literal gods of this universe, decided last minute that Cosmo and Cream were going to switch places and that Cream was going to be the one that was found. Which is a really interesting direction to take this. I, I actually, I actually kind of like that. Let's see where this goes. But one day, before the series was released, the one who created me told them to put in another one of his creations and Cream stepped in. They thought she was much cuter, so they cut me off. It wasn't until after the first two seasons that they called me back in. So yeah. Wow. I mean, Cream is cute, but not like, much cuter. In the end, in order to keep my job, I had to innocently betray him. How... how does someone innocently betray? By betraying someone else without knowing. Okay... I'm gonna go have breakfast. Do you wanna come? Yes, please. And so, they went inside to continue their morning. Uh, what? I'm... I'm so confused. So, did the events of Sonic X happen, or were they actors in a series called Sonic X and when Sonic saw the big spinny thing he just remembered that kid that he was acting with on that show that one time like what did the events of did the events of X happen or not in this universe I'm confused now chapter 8 the fourth Shakira chapter when Shakira got home everyone had set up creationary another one of Shakira's favorite games creationary is great I only ever played it twice but it's a great game so Shakira sat down and started using a lot, and I mean a lot, of blue. Soon cream and then two pieces of green and black. A mini Sonic. I love it! Can I have it? Please, 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 please? Amy asked. Gladly, Shakira gave her the figure. So she decided to talk to one of the only people that knew how to solve this. The only one around that could change it all. The Rena doll! So again, for the uneducated, there was this one Sonic character that appeared once in Sonic R, which then became this massive creepypasta sensation known as the Tails doll. Uh, I love the Tails doll, Tails doll is great. Uh, but because Rena is female Tails, that means by proxy there is a female version of the Tails doll, and that's what the Rena doll is. So there's your context, we're moving on. The next page is this unbroken dialogue between the Rena doll and Shakira. And because I can't differentiate my voice that much that quickly in between lines, I'm just going to leave little indicators on the screen so that you know which one's Arena and which one's a Shakira, just in case you can't hear the difference, because I guarantee you, you probably won't be able to hear the difference. Ah, D. Long time no see. Same to you. I need your help. Mm. What do you want? Take me to about two days before Sonic's death. Okay, two things. First, who the heck is Sonic? And second, why should I help you? The answer to the first is that Sonic is my male version, and to answer the second, because... I'll... Come on, spit it out. I'll release you and all of your friends. When you say all, do you mean only one or two? No, I mean all. Rina Doll raised her eyebrows. And I'll build you a big mansion to live in. Deal. So... Oh, yeah, right, sorry. Two days before death, right? Yeah, that's right. And remember, the deal expires if this doesn't work. Okay. So, Rena Doll closed her eyes and started saying gibberish, and in a split second later, they vanished. So that's the end of the chapter. Um, all I have to say is I'm glad that Rena Doll is canon in this universe and she's considered enough of a threat for Shakira to have locked away in a tower and also has time traveling powers. So like, how could she have just not escaped her imprisonment on her own? There's too many questions to dive in. Chapter nine, the fifth Sonic chapter. Two hours after breakfast, Manic, Sonia and I awoke. I was introduced to Cosmo. She was nice, but the second she said she hated cream, I raged. That's my cousin you're talking about. And? And I don't like how you're talking about her. Well, what are you going to do about it? Tell on me? Nope. Then what are you going to do about it? This. 
And so, uncontrolled by my rage, I slapped her in the face. Jesus Christ, Brittany, you can't abuse eight-year-olds like this. Also, I told you I hated Cosmo. This is just proof that as a kid, I hated Cosmo. Everyone gasped. Brittany, that was uncalled for. Yeah, totally uncalled for. Sonic was already on his knees trying to help Cosmo. No one cared about how I felt. And anyway, she deserved it. After all the bad mouthing she did to my cousin. Still in a rage, I grabbed my hammer. Yes, nearly every one of my girl fan characters has a hammer. <laughs> I love that that's in brackets. That's so cute. Uh, oh, and hit Cosmo until I was standing there long enough for my legs to go numb. Oh my god. What? So Brittany's just standing over this eight-year-old for hours, just mercilessly beating the shit out of her with a What? Why did I write that? The injury was so bad she went to the hospital, but she didn't die. After all, no one can die twice. And after my rage calmed down, I went to see Cosmo. She was covered in bandages, and surprisingly, I knocked out her first molars, both of them. She can't have first molars because she's like an eight-year-old, but I get where you were going. I felt kind of proud that I hit her hard enough for that to happen. At the same time, I felt kind of guilty, but at the end of the day, it's her fault. Oh my god, no, it is not! Control your rage, woman! Good heavens! Are you okay? Yeah, doctor says it should heal in a month. What about the teeth? He gave me some silver ones. And so, in the end, all's well ends well, I guess. No, you beat an eight-year-old, like, almost to second death. What is wrong with you? That's the end of chapter nine. We only have one chapter to go. Unfortunately, this chapter is only a page long because I had run out of space and I had already spent the last page of this book drawing a cover for the sequel, Sonic Adventure 2. <laughs> Sonic Adventure 2, a worthy opponent, which I did actually finish, so if this gets enough attention, uh, I might, I might just record the second one as well. But anyway, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Chapter 10, the fifth Shakira chapter. So Shakira spent two days in the past until the day of Sonic's death. But by the time she got there, Sonic was already tied up. She jumped in, hang on, this is, this is written in a different font. Like same handwriting, but like a different font than the rest of the, the book. So just give me a second while I decipher this code. So Shakira spent two days in the past until the day of Sonic's death. But by the time she got there, Sonic was already tied up. She jumped and untied him. Unfortunately, when she got up, he was dead. So Rena Doll teleported them back to their own time. Shakira locked the Rena Doll up again and left. Back to the day Sonic died, everyone was grieving. And I mean everyone, Shakira and Amy specifically. And as Sonic's grave went down, Everyone had a moment of peace before leaving. Shakira was the last to leave, and as she left in the grave, Sonic's eyes sp Sonic's eyes spit wide open. It says spit wide open. I don't think eyes spit wide open. Uh, but you know what that means? That means Sonic was buried alive. It means the time traveling worked. He was probably just knocked out, and they mistook him for being dead. I don't know how you mistake a knocked out person for being dead to the point where you get them in a coffin. Um, but yeah, that means that means my first ever Sonic the Hedgehog fan fiction ends with Sonic being fucking buried alive. Oh good heavens. Don't get me wrong, I can see why 11 year old me thought that would be a really really good cliffhanger to end on, but Good heavens, oh lord, he's probably dead by the time they realize that he's bur been buried alive. But anyway, that is my very first ever Sonic the Hedgehog fan fiction, Sonic Adventure Distant Worlds. Like I said, I have written the sequel, I have finished the sequel. I'm looking at the sequel on my desk right now. So I will get to reading it eventually, but if you want to speed up that process and you want that video to come out much sooner, leave a like, leave a comment, tell me whether or not you thought Britney was hotter or if Sonya was hotter. Let me know your thoughts on Sonic being buried alive. Uh, let me know how you feel about that weird Sonic X thing where like, did it really happen or was it a show or whatever? I would like to know. 11 year old me needs this criticism. In all seriousness though, I had a fantastic time and this is something that I've wanted to do on this channel for a really long time because I have a lot 
of Sonic content. I have like unfinished stories and like old comics as well, but I have a lot of Sonic content. And I really, really like looking at the past and seeing what I wrote when I was younger. Um, because it's just such a nice feeling. And so I really wanted to share this experience with y'all. So if you stuck it out this long, thank you so, 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 so much. I'm sorry if this book gave you some kind of mental collapse. I wouldn't blame you. It's a bit of a mess. But with that being said, I think I'm done for today. Uh, time for me to put this book back and not read it for another six months to a year when I remember it exists again. So yeah, thank you everyone so much for listening. I hope you all had as much of a good time as I did. Stay warm, stay cozy, stay toasty. If you sneeze during the video at any point, then bless you. And uh, I will see you when I see you. Bye-bye.